Hello hammock campers, long time no see. Uh, I'm back again because I've got some more products from DD Hammocks to test. Uh, they've sent me down some very apt for the winter sleep systems. We have DD's hammock quilt and DD's Dura 2 sleeping bag. So I'm going to be testing them, comparing them not only against each other but also against my regular bag which I've been using for years and that is a Highlander Pack Tech 150. I tend to use this thing as a quilt anyways. I, I just keep it unzipped. It's got a foot box. I put my feet in the foot box uh, and then just use it as a quilt. The problem with using it like that is it's got a hood and the hood ends up in my face and I have to try and tug it around, around my neck and it's a bit of a pain in the ass but um, it's small, it's light, it's easy to pack and it is very warm for its size. It's got a lot going for it. I do normally use my X-Bed Cinemat 7 when I'm camping as well uh, to keep extra heat in but I am going to do this test without it to see just how good these are. As you can see there's some difference in size already. Drew a 2 sleeping bag, pack tech sleeping bag. Hmm, this thing's a bit of a beast. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be comparatively warmer than this given the size. I mean I'm thinking about packing things onto a motorbike or packing things for a walking trip, you know. Size does matter. Uh, so this thing's going to have to justify its size. We'll see how that fares. Back to the hammock quilt. It's roughly the same size as my sleeping bag. Um, but it's a bit lighter so I'm guessing maybe there's less down in there. To be fair these are straight from from shipping and they're probably not as compressed as they could be. Yeah. So these could probably both go a bit smaller if I just use these compression straps. So I may be being a little bit unfair about the sizes of them. But on an initial out of the box test, well this this is, I know this is warm and I know it's small and light. This is small and light. I don't know if it's warm or not. We're going to find out. This thing's a bit bigger and a bit heavier. Maybe a little bit too big. I'm pretty sure it's going to be warm though, so that's something that's going for it. So I'm going to spend a couple of nights in sub-zero temperatures. This is one of the coldest weeks of the year. We've had snow the last couple of days. You may be able to see it in the valley behind me. And uh, it's supposed to go down to minus four or minus six tonight. And then the following night, it's supposed to be around zero degrees with some possible snow. So, wish me luck. And mum, I promise not to die of hypothermia. Morning hammock campers. As you can tell last night, I tested out DD's Dura 2, which I'm currently modeling. If you'll allow me to get dressed, I will talk you through how it went. See you in a bit. Boo! Boo! Stop! Hammock time! Well, as you know, I was expecting to be maybe disappointed by the Dura 2. I don't like being trapped in a sleeping bag, I tend to use my bag as a quilt. Uh, and this thing was just massive and I was wondering if the size was really worth it. It just looked too buggy for me. I don't think it was going to be comparatively warmer than my current bag. But I went hardcore. I tested without my x in mat, which keeps a lot of warmth in. I went full DD, so I've got the DD Jungle Hammock, DD's Dura 2 and the DD uh, Hammock Under Blanket keeping me warm there. There wasn't much wind last night um, but it was down to minus six and there was a freezing fog that rolled in and uh, there was frost at one point but I didn't notice any of that from within my cocoon, within my chrysalis. This thing is delightfully warm. This, this is wonderful. I had to get out and go to the loo quite a few times during the night so having the, the waterproof bottom is good and then when I got here, when I, when I pitched up camp it was it was dark already pretty much, so I didn't have a lot of time to familiarize myself with the gear. Never do that by the way, that's not wise, but in this case, everything's really intuitive. So you get in, it's got the central zip, so it's dead easy to zip up and then sit yourself down in the hammock and then zip it the rest of the way up and then just, just get in. I might even show you in a bit, I might even demonstrate. And then once you're inside, 
there's these drawstrings here and you just pull on them and as you'll see it just tightens this baffle up right around your neck keeps all the heat in keeps it nice and cozy and warm there's a hood there again once you've got that up pull the drawstrings and it just closes it right down um, but you still got all those acres of space inside the bag so I was really impressed I mean it was it when I was getting out of the bag to go to the loo it was freezing out here it was it was below freezing I think it got a minus four or minus six and I didn't notice when I was in the bag so I slept well had a good comfy night uh, still love the jungle hammock by the way really check out my reviews on that because it is a fantastic hammock and this is a really great addition to my kit it's really really warm and it means I can now basically camp hassle free all year round here we go so you put your left foot in you put your right foot in or whichever way you want really you know and you've got this wonderful waterproof bit here like a little foot box so you can stand up without getting cold and wet feet obviously it's got the central zip just zip it up you get to this point you can grab the rear of your, butt, of your hammock and sit down then you can zip it up even further if you so choose so you can wait till you're inside And you're away. Good night. So it removes a lot of that inelegant wriggling around that you have getting into a conventional sleeping bag and trying to fill with a side zip. That's the dirty secret that we campers have, whereas tent campers can, uh, can get into a sleeping bag and go to bed quite easily. Hammock campers, it really doesn't look that elegant. But do you have thought about that? Sorry, DD have thought about that with the Jura and they've fixed it. Thumbs up for the Jura too. <laughs> mm. Good morning, how are campers? You just caught me enjoying breakfast. Some lovely dark chocolate from the co-op. <laughs> I'm a hardcore camper, me. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the hammock quilt. So let me finish breakfast and I'll get right on that. Okay, so last night I slept using Dee Dee's hammock quilt, which looks unsurprisingly just like a quilt. There you go. Now, ugh, it's pretty cold at the moment. It was allegedly warmer last night than the night before, but um, it didn't feel that way to me, to be honest. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to be upfront right away and say that I was maybe mistaken about w what temperature <laughs> the, the quilt is rated at. There was some wind picking up last night, so there's a bit of cold butt syndrome going on. And I have to confess, I didn't make the entire night using just the hammock quilt. I also got my Pack Tech Highlander sleeping bag out and I uh, doubled up with that. The reason I didn't switch to the back to the Jura 2 was because I do like having the freedom to move my arms and legs and to toss and turn and to change position and check my phone and pick up my book and all that sort of stuff. I, I prefer that level of freedom and even though the Jura 2 is a big bag and I'm only 5'7 so I, I get kind of lost in it it is still restrictive, so I chose to use my pack tech as a quilt and use this as a second quilt and that was nice and warm. Anyways, the topic at hand <clears throat> is this. <clears throat> it's basically just a quilt, however it's got some good little additions. It's got a head end and a foot end. At the head end are two pop studs press studs, whatever you want to call them, and a drawstring. So you just pop these together. I'm sure I don't really need to demonstrate how to press pop studs together, or pop press studs together. 
uh, put it over your head and cinch that in. Now this is best done before you get into the hammock because it's a bit of a faff once you're in the hammock trying to pop those studs behind your back. I'll figure that out too late. Um, so that's the first part and also probably best done before you get into the hammock if you like a foot box is to clip the foot box together so you've got two four six seven seven press studs here and a drawstring so it's pretty straightforward and it works pretty well you just clip them up now with it being pop studs instead of zips I did find that they occasionally pop open um, but in each case there was only maybe one or two studs that popped open, not the whole strip, so the foot box was kept intact. Um, but if you really just want to stretch your legs, you can just pop them open, force them open, which you couldn't do with a zip, so it's kind of good. And also my Pac Tech sleeping bag has a fixed foot box and you can't do that. So cinch it up and you've got a foot box there. Huh? And that's it basically, you're in the hammock, you've got your feet in it. Hold on, I'll show you. I'll show you. I know you like demonstrations, sir. Here we go. What was the point in popping them together if I wasn't going to show you? Hey, so... Just like getting into a sleeping bag. Whee! And what that means is I'm now in the bag. I've got this nice seal around my neck. I've got the foot box. Uh, I can tuck it down around. But I've still got all this freedom to move my arms and get my phone and read my book and get my chocolate and another good thing is with this through the night when you need the loo you can just sort of leave it in the bag have your shoes handy and go what I found with the Dura 2 because you zipped in there was the temptation was just to jump to a spot, unzip the handy central zip and then take a leak. Uh, and of course, that's not always going to go well. You're probably going to end up with a smelly sleeping bag after a while. So with the quilt, there's no temptation to do that. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a fault with any of Dee Dee's gear. That's probably just a fault with me. Um, but suffice it to say, I kind of prefer the hammock quilt. It's a bit of a faff. It's not as intuitive as the DD. It took me a while to figure out what was going on, but once you figure it out, it's straightforward. And it's nowhere near as warm as the Dura 2, um, but I don't usually camp in sub-zero temperatures, to be honest. I was mistaken about the hammock quilt. That would probably be a three season rather than a four season item, but the Dura 2 is ace. I mean, it's really nice, really warm, really comfortable. I really like them both, but personally, I prefer to sleep with a quilt rather than a, a sleeping bag. So it's up to you really. If you like the, if you can handle the extra bulk of the Dura 2 and you don't mind being constricted once you're in your bag, then that's for you. It, it can double as a tent bag as well as a hammock bag. You know what I mean? It's, it's cool. Um, but if like me, you like your freedom, then that quilt, it's really light and I'm pretty sure it will scrunch down even smaller. Uh, I'm gonna do that next and find out. So. They're both good products, you just got to figure out which one suits your sleeping style better. For me, I think it's the quilt, but I cannot rate how cosy and warm that Dura 2 was. So, <laughs> so as you know, I'm testing DD's Dura 2 sleeping bag uh, against DD's hammock quilt, uh, but also testing them against my trusty Highlander Pack Tech 150. I've never reviewed this because I got it way before I got into hammer camping, but it's extremely light, it, it compresses down really small, and it's very warm. It's, it, it's incredibly warm for a synthetic bag. I have never had any complaints about it. I'll usually sleep with this and with one or two merino wool base layers on if it's, if it's cold. Uh, my jungle hammock's got an old sleeping bag as an under quilt and then for these tests because it's sub-zero temperature I also added DD's official under quilt so there's two of them on there and I'll usually have my Xped Cinmat 7 uh, and that has always served me well and kept me toasty and warm. 
Uh, so I really, really love this bag. Downside for me, I like to use it as a quilt, stick my feet in the foot box, use it as a quilt. But that means that I'm left with it being this way around and the hood gets in my face. Uh, another downside is it's bright red, it's not very stealth campery. Um, but those are minor things and it's, it, you know, it's a really good piece of kit. So DD's offerings have got stiff competition, they better perform well. That's, that's all I wanted to say. That's that one over and done with. So as you know, I start out with DD's Behemoth, the Jura 2. That's not it, that's the quilt. This is it. Yes. Massive thing. Wonderfully warm. Amazing. Just really, really cozy. Uh, it was, I think, it was minus four at least that night and I didn't notice it until I got out of the bag. So, it's great. Its features are, namely, this tough and durable rubberized waterproof footbox thing so you can get into your bag when you're out of the hammock. This is great if you live somewhere with a lot of snow or you camp when it's rainy and muddy. Uh, it's going to stop your feet and your sleeping bag from getting soggy and wet and you know how hard it is to warm up once you're soggy and wet. Well, this has saved you from all of that. It also has a handy central zip uh, which comes with a really thick baffle so if it is cold and the zip's cold you're not going to get that zip against your chest. Uh, it makes it easier again to get into your bag and then get in your hammock and then zip it all the way up. It's well thought out. DD know what they're doing here. Uh, they have produced a really good quality piece of kit. Once you're in the bag, you pull these drawstrings, tightens around the neck, keeps all that heat locked in, and it, it was superb. It really was good. Uh, the only complaint I have, and it's a minor one, is these drawstrings, once you're in there, are just humongously long. They're just, just, are they designed so you can pull them all the way with your toes or something? I, I don't know why they're so long. I was worried I was gonna end up strangled by them. But as you can see, that didn't happen. So it's a minor complaint. They didn't affect my night's sleep. I just don't know why they're that long. But seriously, I'm splitting hairs just to find a problem with this. It is amazing, yeah? It, it's big. It's very big. I'm going to see how small it compresses. But aside from that, it's an impressive piece of kit. And finally, <coughs> this is the DD Hammock Quilt. Really just does what it says on the tin. It's a quilt. It's a rectangular piece of fabric. Like a little duvet for your hammock. I'm sure it would work well in a tent as well. Uh, but it has these handy little features like it clips around the neck and it has a drawstring. To, to keep all that heat in and it has a, clips to create a little temporary footbox if you so desire. Uh, simple, really simple. I, I can't believe there's not more of these out there because it. I love it. I prefer the freedom of a quilt rather than being locked inside a bag. No matter how good, beautiful, cozy and warm that bag is, I like to be able to move around. So this for me is great. Not as warm as my Highlander Pack Tech 150. It's definitely not a four season piece of kit. I did have to supplement last night um, with my Highlander. Just bear that in mind. They're not, these are two are not comparable temperature wise. The one is more for if you like camping in winter, if you like camping when the world is white. This other one is for everything else. <laughs> if you don't like being trapped inside a sleeping bag, this is for you. They're both really good products. Uh, and as I'm sure I've already said, DD, make solid good products and I really love testing their stuff so uh, I can't really help you make a decision here you know and one of them doesn't stand out among the other they both have entirely separate sort of functions and uses and I can see why DD's created them both so really quickly I've compressed them all down as far as they'll go and the sizes are a bit more comparable now to be honest can you even tell which one's which? Obviously this is my Highlander, so this for me was the standard. Uh, this quilt is smaller and lighter, so it's gonna be easier and more fun to carry in the summer. So I like it a lot. Uh, so warmer temperatures, this is a clear winner. And then the Jura 2 actually squishes down really small. I know it doesn't look pretty squished down that small, 
but that makes it easy to pack on a motorbike or in a bag or whatnot. So it's good, yeah. Like it went down a lot smaller than I thought it would. So again, it's almost comparable now. It's almost comparable to the Pack Tech. So all of that I said about it being a behemoth and being big and being too unwieldy and whether it'll be worth the trade-off is a little bit moot, I think. It actually squishes down really small.